When you work with large billion dollar corporations, they are always looking at what are the efforts that they're doing that is giving them the largest amount of result. The reason that these large corporations and companies will cut certain products or services that aren't selling is because they're overall looking at how they can get more with doing less. Welcome to Generation Wealth. I'm Candy Valentino, and I've been building businesses and generating wealth before I could legally order a drink. For more than two decades, I've built, scaled, acquired, and exited businesses, all while investing in real estate and building financial freedom. Now I want to help you expand your wealth and give you the proven roadmap to implement today. It doesn't matter if you're a part of Generation X, Generation Y, or Gen Z. It is time to join Generation Wealth. Now let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Generation Wealth, your podcast for all things building wealth. Thanks for tuning in to this little episode this week. I wanted to break down a principle that I have used in wealth creation, in investing, and in business for, gosh, probably 20 years. It's called Pareto's Principle. And I don't know if you've heard of it before. You may have heard of it referred to as the 80-20 rule. And even if you've heard of it, you may not have heard of exactly how it works and how you can apply it in wealth building, in your business, in, your really, in so many things, so many things. So I just wanted to get started on what it is, if you haven't heard about it, and how it works. The Pareto Principle is named after an Italian economist named Vilfredo Pareto. What a name, right? <laughs> Who observed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the population. He realized that this pattern could also be found in many other areas of life, such as business, economics, and even personal finance. The Pareto Principle states that 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. In other words, in simpler terms, 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. This means that if you focus on the 20% that generates most results, you can achieve a lot more with a lot less effort. Here's how we can use this principle as it relates to wealth. This principle can be applied to obviously many areas of life, but I want to just break down a few examples. Let's say, for example, income. If you focus on the 20% of your work that generates 80% of your income, this might mean taking a more specific type of client, maybe a higher paying client, maybe focusing on a specific project or product that generates either the most revenue or the most profitability. Obviously, if you have a business, this should be something that you're looking at at least quarterly, if not monthly, by reviewing your sales, whether that's from your POS system or whatever that you use to track all of your sales and see where is the 20% of the work that's generating 80% of the income. It may be a type of client. It may be a, a specific revenue amount that's coming in from a specific product or service. But I promise you, if you just do that one thing in every single month or every single quarter, you review all of your sales and see where is the most significant portion of my income coming from. And then the second question is, how can you gather, find, and source more clients, more sales, that are like that as opposed to anything else. I use the analogy of large corporations. When you work with large billion dollar corporations, they are always looking at this principle. What are the efforts that they're doing that is giving them the largest amount of result of income? So for example, if they have a lot of products on their shelf and they have so many options available, the reason that these large corporations and companies will cut certain products or services that aren't selling or aren't selling as profitable profitably is because they're overall looking at how they can get more with doing less. The Pareto principle also applies to expenses. So identify 20% of your expenses that are responsible for 80% of your spending. Now, this of course could be things that you may not be able to cut like housing, transportation, food, but there are areas that you probably can or that you can do the same thing that you're doing, but do them in a less expensive way. So when is the last Last time you took your bank, your bank account statements, your bank reconciliations, your credit card statements, your debit card statements, whichever system that you're on, and you review all of the expenses that are coming out of
of your account every single month. Identify what 20% is responsible for 80% of your spending, and then take a deep dive in and see if there's anything you can do to reduce or negate some of those expenses so that you can keep more of what you make. Third is investments, focusing on the 20% of the investments that generate 80% of your returns. This could mean investing in maybe high-performing stocks, mutual bonds, whatever it looks like for you, or maybe it's putting money into real estate or other alternative investments. I always looked at the 20% of my investments that generated 80% of my income is was real estate, was, is, and always will be real estate. So it's important for you to look and see what it is for you. It doesn't have to be the same that it is for me, but you want to know what percentage of your investments is really generating the 80% of your returns. The other place that this could really be valuable, the fourth place, is being mindful of your time, your productivity. Identify the task that takes up the most time and evaluate if they're really worth the effort. If they're not generating significant results, consider outsourcing them, delegating them to someone on your team, or eliminating them altogether. If you want to master delegation, automate your onboarding and training new employees, as well as run a more efficient operation, you need to start documenting your processes. The good news is there's a platform called Trainial. Trainial can easily document everything about your business, finally get your SOPs and policies organized, and shave tons of time off onboarding and training. Whether you're trying to grow or scale with consistency, or you need more ROI on your team's time, Trainial is the answer. Businesses of all shapes and sizes are raving about Trainio, including mine, resulting in cutting training time and related costs by 75%. And right now, our podcast listeners can get 10% off their first year. Visit www.trainio.com and enter the promo code CANDY. That's Trainio, T-R-A-I-N-U-A-L.com, promo code CANDY when you pick your plan. Now, while the Pareto principle suggests that we focus on the 20% that generates most of the results, we obviously shouldn't completely ignore the other 80%. There may be opportunities outside of that 20% that can generate significant results. So it's important to always stay open to them and be mindful being mindful of how we're spending our time, where we're putting our focus and how we're spending our energy. It's it's so important because if we're constantly chasing every new opportunity, every shiny object that comes our way, we may end up spreading ourselves too thin and not achieving anything significant. So while it's important to stay open to opportunities outside of the 20%, we also want to evaluate them carefully. Make sure that they align with your overall goals and priorities. The best way to use the 80-20 rule is as a guidepost, some guide rails, guardrails, if you will, not a strict rule. Instead of focusing exclusively on that 20% that generates most of the results, you can aim to spend 80% of your time and energy on the 20% of those tasks, right? So if you spend 80% of your focus, time, energy on that 20%, then you're leaving yourself some room, some openness to new opportunities that may arise. And look, this isn't something I just woke up and decided to talk about today. This has been used successfully in the business world for decades. Like I said, I know I was using this 20 years ago. Many successful businesses have applied this to streamline their operations and achieve greater efficiency. For example, Amazon used this to optimize their product offerings and focus on the items that generate the most revenue. They also use this principle currently to prioritize their customer service efforts, focusing on the 20% of the customers that generate 80% of their revenue. And as if that's not enough, another example is Google, which uses this to identify the 20% of their employees that generate 80% of their innovation and productivity. By focusing on these employees and providing them with the resources they need, Google has been able to achieve significant growth and success. So in summary... Here's how you can start using it to build wealth. First, identify the area of your financial life where you can apply this principle. This could be your income, your expenses, your investment, your productivity, or in your business. Once you've identified these areas, start by focusing on that 20% that generates the most results 
And at the same time, like I said, don't completely ignore it, but spend 80% of your time there, 20% of your time open to outside opportunities. I am really grateful for Vilfredo Pareto, who created this back in Italy. This has saved so many people so much time, energy, and focus when they're looking at where to spend their time in their business and in their finances. And I think that it's something that you will love as well once you start to implement it. Okay, guys, that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And don't forget that if you didn't buy a copy yet of Wealth Habits, it is now available on Audible. And thank you so much for all of your support because we are number one bestseller, new release in multiple categories. And of course, if you already have a copy of the book and downloaded it and listened to the book, please consider leaving a five-star review over on Amazon. It would mean the world to me as well as many other readers that need this information. Okay, guys, that's it for today. We'll see you next time on Generation Wealth. 